Today we're going to compare MIG welding versus TIG welding on aluminum. I've had a lot of questions about this lately. And while there's a lot of nuance to welding aluminum, whatever process you choose, picking the right process for the job makes things a whole lot easier, though there's a lot of times when you could use either one. Now let's start off with aluminum MIG welding. And just in case you're brand new to welding, MIG welding uses the wire as the electrode. And so it pushes wire out through a gun and melts this wire as well as the base material with an electrical arc between your workpiece and the wire. So adding wire and adding heat are combined together. And this is what it looks like when it's all going into the weld pool. There are some unique challenges when it comes to MIG welding aluminum. One is that the wire is really soft. So notice right here how when I try to push on it, it bends. So pushing it through a long lead is difficult. And a lot of times you'll use a spool gun like this with wire feeder that just pushes it straight out the end to solve that problem. Those are kind of bulky, so I'm gonna do it a different way. This is a special gun that I uh, have here for a couple of my machines that has a thicker lead and a liner in it that's uh, really low friction. And if you're wondering what that extra wire is, that's a remote control, so I can turn it down as my material heats up. That's a real problem with aluminum, is it heats up like crazy as you weld. And this setup is nice because I can run a larger spool of wire and I don't have to carry around the spool gun. But the technique is gonna be the same either way. Now a lot of people don't realize with MIG welding that you need a different shielding gas for basically every material that you're gonna weld, and this one is going to be straight argon today. Now I'm going to be using the built-in settings in the machine here, but with every machine I've ever welded with, whether you set it off a chart or the built-in settings, with aluminum, it's really particular, so I always fine-tune my settings before I actually run my weld. Because with different wire on a different day, it's just much more sensitive than it is with regular short circuit MIG welding on steel. So let me show you here uh, with the baseline settings that I'm starting with, it's creating a fairly large droplet and short circuiting a little bit. And I don't want to have like a frying bacon sound like I'd have with steel when I'm welding aluminum. I want it to be a smooth, steady arc. So with any wire feed process, voltage controls your arc length. So I want a longer arc length. I'm going to turn up my voltage and notice now it's just this straight spraying motion. That's what I'm looking for. So that was one volt difference and one volt uh, makes a lot of difference. Now this might not be much to look at. It was kind of some beat up material I used for setup, but right there you can see how it's just piled on top, then increase it by a volt to get that arc length and it's diving in a little deeper. On the other hand, if the arc length was too long, I'd want to turn it down a little bit for better control. So that's very challenging when you're welding a project with a lot of different thicknesses or joint geometries because each time you have to dial in your settings and get it to run just right for that joint. Once you do, you can cover a lot of ground quickly, but uh, it is some time where TIG welding with the foot pedal and the ability to change how fast you add filler metal, you can kind of adapt on the fly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tack together a joint. This is something you need to do whenever you're assembling your project. And with aluminum MIG, you've gotta be quick on the trigger for a tack weld because you add material in a hurry. You can see those are fairly large tack welds there. Uh, they are controlled, but you are gonna get a little bit larger tack when you're MIG welding than you would get with TIG welding. Now the keys to MIG welding aluminum are lots of gas, a little bit longer stick out than you'd use with steel, a little further away from the material, I mean, and a push angle. And when I do this, I get a nice weld. Notice I'm just moving steadily. There's no manipulation here. I'm just following along that puddle as though it's some water filling up a glass. And I hang with it right on that front edge. And when I do that, I get a nice smooth result. Now, when you're welding right up to the end of a plate, it's pretty hard to control the heat at the end of that with aluminum. So keep that in mind that often I end up filling in the crater after the fact. Now, if you do want a rippled appearance, you can use a little bit of a stitching motion like this. I wouldn't use this technique with steel, but notice I'm just pushing forward a little and then back into the puddle. 
and this will stack it up because the aluminum puddle freezes pretty fast, but with any manipulation, I try not to leave the puddle. I stay with it uh, through the whole thing, but this can give you a bit of a stack of dimes type appearance. Let's take a closer look at that, and that can uh, look really nice on some projects. It, it was a little cold there at the start. That was uh, my fault, but either way, you can get a nice result smooth or with that stitched motion. Now I do have that crater on the end that I mentioned that uh, I could improve with some machine settings or go and fill it back in because I don't want that. But uh, either way, I'm gonna take a quick look here at Pulsed MIG. I get a lot of questions about Pulsed MIG and this machine has it. So I figured I'd show right here what that looks like. Basically, I'm doing the same thing, but it's pulsing between a high and a low amperage setting and that works really well. It's not necessary in this situation, but it can control heat input for thinner material or different joints. It's just another tool in the belt. I'm gonna change over now to steel wire because I need to do some steel welding immediately after this video, and I thought it would be a good thing to talk about since we're comparing processes. With most machines, you do have a changeover that you need to do when you switch materials with MIG. And for me, this is about a five minute exercise working at a casual pace, and it's uh, not such a big deal occasionally, but if you are switching back and forth, TIG has basically no switchover. So keep that in mind when it comes to your MIG. When people ask about machines, this is the HTP Revolution 2500 that I'm using today. It can run that pulsed aluminum MIG, can also run AC TIG, clear up to 250 amps with a lot of advanced features. It's not cheap as is the case with most good tools, but it is a great machine and I have a link in the description that does help support the channel if you are interested in something like this. Let's go ahead and move on to aluminum TIG. Now with TIG welding, you've decoupled the addition of heat from the addition of filler metal. And in this case, I'm just dabbing right on the leading edge. And you can see how this could give some flexibility. If you're welding thicker material, I can slow down a little and let that heat soak in between each dab. And I add in a foot pedal, and that gives me even more flexibility. Now, the really nice thing about setting up for TIG welding aluminum is you use the same shielding gas that you use for steel or stainless steel or pretty much any metal. You can use straight argon for all of them. And that makes things really straightforward when you wanna weld a wide variety of materials without having a lot of different gas cylinders. It's just a simple change of torch consumables and some settings and you're ready to go as long as you have AC or alternating current on your machine. I'm gonna go ahead and change over to TIG mode and make sure that I'm on AC. The AC is needed to etch the aluminum oxide layer off of the surface. Now this is the torch setup that I'm using. There are a lot of different consumables that you can get for the front of your torch. I use this setup for videos because I can extend the electrode out a little further than I usually would and that just helps you to be able to see a little bit better. Now let's go ahead and tack some things up. And this is a good illustration of the precision that you get with TIG. That's one of the huge advantages. It's a very precise process where you place your heat. And since you don't have to add filler metal, which I'm not right here, I can get a really nice small tack that's not even gonna be visible, uh, especially when you're putting together a whole project. So that's a big advantage with TIG to have that precision. Now notice this is a bit slower on the travel speed. I could go a bit faster than this by increasing amperage, but in general, you're gonna be slower than you are with MIG. Now I'm just moving along and advancing that puddle, maintaining steady angles, a steady length between the end of the electrode and my workpiece, and then dabbing in every now and again. I thought I'd put a shot in here. I don't usually show this, but when I'm filming, notice how I'm working around the camera. And this is something to think about because if you are in tight spaces, you have more stuff that you have to get in there with TIG. So that can be a real challenge in practical situations, especially repairs, automotive type work, and things like that. So I am biased towards TIG. I do like it better but it's not the best fit in every situation. If I wanna get something done, I'll still go with MIG, or if I'm in a tight space, it can be pretty helpful to be able to run those MIG welds. Well, as I finish the weld here, I'll just show you, you can get a nicer appearance with TIG than you can with MIG. It just, uh, it, it, it's hard to beat the, the stack dimes. 
So let's just do a quick recap. With aluminum MIG, you are gonna have to deal with that soft wire with a spool gun or a special setup, and you do need to have the right gas, which is different than the gas you'd use for steel, and the settings are very sensitive. That being said, you can weld quickly, and it's a relatively uh, easy process to learn once you have those settings dialed in. You can get a nice result, and it works really well for a lot of projects. With TIG, you're going to be traveling a little bit slower and you need to have access for both the torch and filler metal, but it is a very precise process that you can use to put the material right where you want it. The setup is basically the same for any material, so that's nice to change over between each of them. And it's really nice to have the flexibility to work with uh, different thicknesses and joint configurations and adjust on the fly more than you can with MIG. So there's no right or wrong, uh, they just have some different attributes and for a lot of projects you could use either one. If you are just getting started with welding and you're going from ground zero and you wanna get going a lot faster, the courses I've put together walk you through hands-on exercises because you can watch videos like this and learn a lot about welding but to actually learn to weld, there's kind of a different path that I'm able to cover on these videos, and that's why I've built those and kept them as affordable as possible. So check them out linked in the description below. If you learned something or enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below, and we'll see you next time.